Hey, what is going on guys? Deanna from ModBot here. I hope you guys have had a fantastic couple of weeks. I have missed you all and I'm very excited to be able to give you guys another video. Before we get into that, I just wanted to give another huge thank you to GearBest for supplying this 3D printer for me to be able to unbox, review, and uh, build it for you guys. It is the Anycubic Castle 3D printer, the pulley version. And they also supply you with a coupon code, which is GBTE. If you use that code, it'll give you 12% off of your purchase if it's not already on sale. And a link to this 3D printer will be in the description down below. It does also help out this channel. So huge thank you for that. And uh, yeah, so since last time, which was the build video, it was like a 20 minute video of me assembling this thing. I have done quite a lot of stuff to it, which you'll be able to kind of see from the video here and shots. Uh, the first thing, I wish I could say that I just plugged everything in and hit print and it ran smoothly, but that would just not be the case. I had quite a few issues that, uh, again, I do my best to be as honest with my reviews as possible and updates. So um, the first issue I ran into was when I attempted to print, uh, the 3D printer would either die before starting to print or it would print a couple of layers and then die. And I ended up swapping out the power supply it came with to a beefier power supply that I had laying around and that fixed it. So I'm not sure if my power supply was just, uh, you know, defective or whether the power supply is just underrated for what you're trying to do. But uh, I did see a couple other people with similar issues. So a quick fix for that is just to pick up a power supply, like a standard 3D printer one. And I just cut off the cable and wired it up to the... A kind of more traditional standard power supply that comes with 3d printers and that fixed that issue the next issue i had was this one was uh ir irritating because of the amount of things i did to figure out what the issue was uh, essentially it would be printing and it would be printing fine for the most part really and after anywhere from hmm, i don't know maybe 40 to 50 layers it would uh start making a clunk 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 sound and uh, not the clunk clunk sound like the extruders jammed the clunk clunk sound like one of the stepper motors was not moving correctly and I was able to locate the stepper motor and so I was thinking in my head it could be a few things one bad stepper motor which I've never experienced two maybe something was not moving smoothly along that axis so it could have been a bearing that kind of binded up or my belt not being correct or lastly a driver well I swapped out the driver with another one that was working on another motor that didn't fix it. I ended up uh, checking to make sure it was moving up and down the arm smoothly uh, while the printer was off. There was no restriction. So the last thing I did was I put a different motor in and I had to rewire it because that stepper motor wasn't wired the same way as the ones it came with. And I hit print and that seemed to fix it. And then after about 60 layers, back to the same issue. And then I noticed it on a different motor altogether. So then I started thinking in my head, there's no way that all of these motors are defective. So I went ahead and pulled up my multimeter and checked on the uh, drivers. And I saw that they were set extremely low, like way too low of a current for, um, you know, what I was trying or for a 3D printer, essentially. And I was trying to in increase the uh, current, you know, by adjusting the potentiometer and it wouldn't go past a certain point it kept it was like they were all staying really low which was strange and so what i did was i took some some uh stepper motor drivers that i had from another build plopped them in and they went to uh i think i got them up to like 0.85 uh without a problem the other ones i couldn't get past like 0.7 and uh, the ones i swapped out with i was able to get the extruder one up to like uh, 1.0 no problem i usually give that one a little bit higher of a current just because it's usually doing more and you know pushing more filament so I give it a little more uh, uh, current to it and that fixed it so I ended up just swapping out all of the drivers now again I don't know whether I just got unlucky and all of my drivers were malfunctioned I don't know if it was a me thing I, I really can't tell you but uh, by f replacing the power supply and finally just swapping out all the drivers I was able to get this thing printing and uh, printing really well, actually, uh, extremely impressive. So uh, once that was all said and done, everything has been printing beautifully. So I kind of showed you guys, well, I did have to do a little bit of software tweaking as well. So I show you guys uh, a couple of like calibration cubes along with benchies. Well, once I got it actually printing all the layers correctly, I was noticing quite a lot of uh, just 
bad quality in my prints and I couldn't figure out what the heck was the deal. I was, you know, thinking, okay, everything's moving correctly, filament's extruding correctly, why are we getting such bad quality? Well, after printing quite a few benchies, I seemed to have finally figured it out and I attempted to print a large benchy while I was sleeping, which was like a five hour print or something like that. And what I ended up having to do was adjust my slicer settings um, to make the speed quite a lot lower. I think I'm printing at like 40 uh, MMS, so I think millimeters a second. And I had to lower the jerk and I had to lower the acceleration. And once I did those things, again, I printed this bench while I was sleeping, it printed beautifully. The only tragic thing was I didn't have the uh, filament on some kind of a spool. It was literally on the ground just being rolled. And when the benchy got to like the top portion of it, I think that the filament got caught on something on my floor, not allowing it to pull anymore, which basically made the top layers shift. And so when I woke up the next morning and saw that, yeah, I was bummed out, but I wanted to make sure it was just a me error and not the printer actually having issues uh, with layer shifting. So I printed a hollow 20 by 20 calibration cube and I made it 200 millimeters tall, which printed insanely insane. Like the layers are perfect and it looks beautiful so it was just a me thing so all in all once i got the power supply and the drivers uh, situated and adjusted my slicer this thing is printing beautifully and i can't lie i do not have a ton of experience with delta style machines i had um the one dagoma neva a little while back that came pre-assembled which you know that didn't require anything on my part and I had a GTEC one a long time ago that I didn't even use that much after printing it. I got it working and then I didn't do much with it. So I haven't touched adults in a while and it's definitely a separate beast uh, compared to your more standard style, you know, Cartesian printers. And um, so since then, all I've done is print out some covers for the motors on the bottom and the top for the limit switches just to keep my dog's hair and dust out. I think they look really nice. And I also swapped out the uh, mount for the build plate it kind of shifted around with the default setup so with these little printed upgrades that plate is not going anywhere so aside from that all I really plan on doing is adding some LEDs um, and maybe wiring up like a Raspberry Pi camera combo with uh, potentially I saw a really cool filament holder for the top of this printer and since this printer is already so tall and I have it on the other side of my room compared to where my spool um, setup is I guess where you can just pull down spools of plastic and feed them into the printers I might just do that on the top of it so uh, I will show you guys another video on this which will be a final review in that video I will cover my experience um, you know with the build with the instructions with the parts with the printing so it'll be basically this but much more in depth with more pictures and things like that but uh, I wanted to uh, pictures and videos obviously um, but I wanted to give you guys an update because it has been a while and uh, I spent a lot of time uh, troubleshooting this thing so I felt like, uh, you know, this is video worthy to kind of show you guys what's going on. And I actually have another 3D printer I just got in that I need to start printing uh, relatively soon, which is the TiVo Tarantula, uh, which is not a new printer by any means, but one that I've heard a lot about, good and bad. So I'm really excited to be able to unbox, build, and do all that good stuff for you guys. But again, links will be down in the description for you all uh, if you're interested in purchasing it or finding out more. If you do have any questions for myself pertaining to this 3D printer, Feel free to leave me a comment in this uh, you know, video down below and I will do my best to get back to you, um, I promise. So again, wow, this video is already eight and a half minutes. <laughs> I wasn't planning on talking that long, but it's been two weeks, so I kind of have a lot uh, on my mind, a lot of stuff that I just wanted to talk about in terms of this printer. And um, yeah, hope you guys are all having a fantastic month. Uh, my brother's actually getting married this next week, which is crazy, so it's gonna be busy. It'll probably be another couple weeks until you guys get another video Maybe not. We'll see. It depends on if I can pump that review out for you guys. But um, hope you guys are all doing well. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. And I am out. Peace, guys.